Okay, today we are going to be doing a practicum on documentation. And this is to help you get through the assignment. So let's start out with what you need to do for this assignment. On this assignment, I'm going to ask you to do documentation so that you understand how to do it. The forms are in the assignment, so you just need to downline, down, download the forms and you can put them into the forms and return your assignment to me. The first part of the assignment that I want to go over with is I want you to remember that all your documentation feeds on with each other. So you're going to do your assessment, your MDS, your CA, and then you, you write a care plan, and then you can write a quarterly report. This is all stuff that we went over in class, and each piece feeds into the other piece so that you can prove what you did for the residents and you document the outcome so that you can show somebody, yes, I offered them this and this is how they performed and this is how many times they performed. This protects you in survey so that it shows what the work is that you did, how you followed up by doing your attendance sheet so that you can prove what you did. So it's important that you fill out these forms correctly. So let's go over those now. And what I'm gonna do is put them up on the screen so that you can see them. And I'll go over how these are supposed to be filled out. The first one that you have to do is the activity assessment. And that, this is a form that I made out because it's much easier than the ones that they offer you in your um, corporation. Corporation one is just like a checklist. And this asks personal questions. So you take notes on here that you can file into the um, computer, into the chart, so that you have the right kind of the questions asked. So we don't just don't want a list of what they want to do. We want to know exactly what they want to do and what kind of music they want and what TV shows they want to watch. And on here, I have some questions like, what's important to you? What's the most... Uh, important thing that you have done in your life? What are you the most proudest of? This opens up their conversation so they'll talk about themselves. So ask these questions so you can get the right kind of answers and you can find out what is important to this person. Another question down here that we want to talk about once in a while is, have you always lived in the United States? Or what, what states did you live in? This will give you a little history on where they moved around and what they did. Another question that's good to ask is ask them about their career. Now, they will tell you all about their career, so ask them what's the best career that you had or the best job that you had. That will be very helpful in getting them to open up and talk about their lives. The rest of the questions are pretty standard on here, and I want you to fill it out and put in the answers. And then down at the bottom here, I'm going to ask you to do some review, some observations of your resident. So tell me, what is their physical abilities? Can they use both hands? What is their cognitive ability? Can they answer questions? Or are they forgetful? So fill in what you observe also about this person as you interview them. And that's the first part of this assignment. So when you've done that, you have that part done. The next thing that you're going to do is I'm going to ask you to make some progress notes and some contact notes. So here are some typical ones that you might want to write about. You, want, you might want to write about their behavior. Are they anxious? Are they calm? Are they forgetful? So write a little bit about some of the observations that you observe about their, their ability to communicate and how they interact with you. Uh, the next one on here is ask a little bit about their cognition. Do they have difficult word finds? Do they have trouble in finishing their sentences? Are they forgetful? Are they repeating themselves? The next one that you want to maybe put in there is a little bit of uh, their orientation. Can they read? And ask them to read something to you. The next one down here is a little bit of their social skills. So do they want to be around people or do they prefer to be alone? And then the final one down on here, write a little bit about their abilities. So these are um, contact notes and observations that you've made. 
Now you don't just do those these when you do the um, activity assessment. You do these also when you see a change in their behavior. So like if I were to write a context note about their physical abilities, it might be something similar to, um, can throw the ball 15 feet, have noticed lately lack of strength in upper arm and can only throw ball five feet. And that would be a good contact note for me to, know, to make because it's showing a change in their ability. So that's what basically the contact notes and pro progress notes are for is so that you can show a good picture of what your observations of what these people are capable of doing. Okay, so use this, fill it out, fill these out in complete sentences. You don't have to be really long, but this is what you would be doing for your contact notes. And when you go into the computer, it will show you activities, and then you'll type in progress note or contact note, and it'll come up a blank page. What I've done here is given you some clues on how to fill these out. So fill out four really good contact notes for me, for your person that you're doing the documentation on. Okay, the next sheet that we're gonna do is after you've done the activity assessment and a couple of your contact notes, then I go back in and I interview for the MDS and the, car, the cat in the car. So um, first let's talk about the MDS here. When we do this, instead of being like it was in our activity assessments, like a really nice friendly little conversation, what we have to do is do this more like an interview where you have to get specific answers. And they always give you this sheet, important, very important, somewhat important, not important at all. And so you have to get them to answer to this and say, yes, it's important for me to read. Oh, it's not so important for me to, me to read. So that would be a two. Oh, I don't read, I don't like to read at all. I never read. So that would be a number five. So they have these numbered and we have to get a specific answer. What I'd like to do next is let's go through, let me just show you this for a minute. This is what it looks like on the computer. Well, for this assignment, what I've done is we put in an easier form for you to fill out, but it's the same concept. So what you would do is, um, they have the cues up here at the top. It's important, somewhat important, not important at all, or can't do it because I don't have the equipment. So it has the cues up there for you. And at the top section is uh, section 400. And these are questions about the nursing service that they'll receive. And for some reason, activities has to ask whether you want a shower or a bed bath, and we give this back to nursing, or whether you want to pick out your own clothes. It's a little bit about how they're going to exist or how they're, uh, what their preferences are while they're in the building. The next part at the bottom down here is um, F tag 500. This is where we're going to ask questions exactly about the activities that they want to do. So the first question is, do you want to read books, magazines, or newspapers? And we want to find out, yes, uh, it's very important that I do this. It's somewhat important. I don't care if I do it. So you're going to find out your answer up here, and you're going to put it in here. But what is very important for you to do is ask the secondary question. Oh, you like the newspaper? What newspaper do you like to take? Do we need to bring it from home, or, or, can we, or should we order it for you? and find out whether they want the Oregonian or New York Times, whatever it is that they want and see if your budget will allow you to do that. So, or if not, have the, the family buy the subscription and have it um, mailed there. Um, so, but when, when I ask, what do you want to read? And they tell me books, don't just stop there. Find out, do they want to read romance novels? Do they want historical novels? Do they want um, technical information? So we've got to find out, ask that secondary question, find out what is their real interest. Not just the, the activity that they want to do, but exactly what do they want to do. Same thing with music. If they say they like jazz, then set, find out, oh, do you like classical jazz or do you like jazz from the 40s? What kind of jazz do you like? So we want to make sure that we find out what they want, but we also find out exactly what they want. So that if we bring them the wrong step, they aren't going to use it. 
So go through down the rest of these questions. The last ones you have to ask is if they they have any religious preferences, and that's important to find out because we don't want to ask them to church group if they're an atheist, or or have other uh, another religious preference that we should be honoring. So that's very important to do. And then another question that's important on here is, do you like to be alone or do you want to come to groups? Most people will be a combination. They want to come to some groups, but they don't want to come to all groups. They need time to recover in the room. So that, that one you need to ferret out a little bit too and ask those secondary questions. This will give you a good concept of what the residents want when they come into your, your building. And this is what we should try to provide for them. Okay, so that's that form. The next form that you'll be doing is the cat and the car. Now um, these are two forms. It doesn't, the um, sheet that we've given you in your uh, pullout for the assignment is a little bit clearer. This is a little bit more like what it's like on the computer. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna, this is what's called the cat, care area triggers. And what we need to do is fill out this form because if you don't fill out this form and won't let you go to the CAW, which is the second part of this form, which is care area analysis. And you have to fill those out in order to get um, to the problem and solve the problem. What's great about this form is it asks you a whole bunch of questions. So it makes you really think about your resident and makes you realize, oh, I should maybe address this too, or I should think about approaching them this way. So this form really is pretty good. Now, what's confusing about the form, however, is that it's going to ask you a bunch of things and in this list it has contrary things it says are you active are you passive well they're either one or the other no sometimes that person is both so you're going to mark down active and passive they might be very active in physical things but they're very passive at cooking group or at, or, or when they listen to music so and it also asks do you want to be families or not with families so whatever applies you put down here and then over here in this box, you're going to write, see activity assessments concerning interest. And then you put the date because you've done several activity assessments and you want to make sure you send them to the right one. So put down activity assessments concerning current interest and the date, 9-11 or whatever your date is. Every time you put mark in something over here, it's going to ask you, where is it documented in the chart? And that's why you, you may have to put it down. Oh, activity assessment. Maybe you, maybe you wrote some infor information important in a contact note. So put a contact note about current interest and put the date. That way it'll always take them to the right area, the survey or to the right area so they can find the information that, that they need. Okay, the next one down here is residents' interests. What did, did they state their interest? and you'll probably mark that. And are they self-directed? It also says self-directed or done with others. Okay, so mark that if that applies. And then again, see contact note or see MDS. Wherever you noted this information that, that they're asking you for, you put down the piece of documentation where you wrote it in, okay? On the next page, they will ask us about their diagnosis. And if I don't know what the diag, what uh, there's no problems here that I need to check, I'll put just just see diagnosis if that there is an issue. However, if I have a question about their cog cognitive level, you'll notice they have some extra numbers over here. So underneath cognitive level here, it has C500. C700, that can tell me if I go to section C and look at group questions 500, it'll tell me what somebody wrote in about their cognitive level. Now, if I disagree, I can say, I can mark something else and say, well, their cognitive level is fine in activities. They're very active and they, they, they sequence well. And um, with a little bit of cueing, they can function well. That may be something different than what somebody else wrote. So I have a right to write that in and make, make a comment on it. However, I don't have to agree with what everybody says because everybody reacts differently when they work with different people. And as a result, we want to be fair and say, hey, and when they're doing physical sports, 
they have no cognitive issues. They may have cognitive issues though, however, with sequencing and when that, when I have them in a um, group where we're doing arts and crafts and they can't remember the steps, that's when I might say, yeah, I'm seeing the same problem that you're seeing with, with sequ sequencing because it's a, it's a common area that, common of cognition area that they're working in. Okay, so that covers that area for you. And then down here, it's, it has environmental. Now on this one, I really don't like to mark anything in here because what I usually like to do is go ahead and tell another department member what the problem is because I don't want to trigger anybody. So it's the first one says here, physical barriers. And sometimes I'll have to mark this because nursing leaves out, the aides will leave out the wheelchair and people can't get to the bathroom because their roommate wheelchair is out in the way. So what I'd like to do is go tell them, nursing staff first, put the wheelchairs away because it's a barrier and it's causing a problem. This will be a survey issue. I don't particularly want to mark that down there. But if they don't correct it, I have to mark it down there. And then I'm going to make sure that I tell my administrator and the nursing department, this is happening on this shift on this floor and we are causing barriers. But if there's a problem the maintenance man can fix down here, I'd rather go tell the maintenance man first, wait for him to get it fixed, and it doesn't become a problem that will be re, um, become a survey problem. But if people aren't acting on it, then you have to mark it in. Hopefully everybody will mark it in and not be a problem because usually everybody works pretty well as a team. The next section here is up here, do they have any special interest? And I love to mark these in. Because then, if somebody has special interests like how to work computers, they can help other people. And, I, and they enjoy helping other people. If they don't want to, I won't make them do it. But sometimes people have special interests and they like to share those things. And or else, the other thing is that they need special equipment because they have something special that they're going to do. And so I need to know what those special things are so that I mark it in and say, interview, um, shows the resident likes this, this, and this, and activities will provide the equipment. See progress note, and then the date. So that's very important to fill out because it will remind you when you do it that way, it will remind you, oh, they have this special interest, and I better go to the library and get them some special books on that, or a movie on that, or some equipment so they can do it out in the yard if they have special gardening interests or something. So this is very helpful uh, as a reminder for you. Um, then the last part here, sometimes I have to mark this first one. It says resident is new to the facility or has been in the facility long enough to become bored. Now, most of the time they're new. So you say see activity assessment and the date for new interest because of, for their new interest. And sometimes I have to mark it because they become bored with what they're doing. And you may have a progress note. Uh, resident dissatisfied with current activity, see progress note of, and the date. And your progress note will probably say something like, resident no longer interested in, in group saying and would prefer to listen to classical music in the room. Because their interests change. And we have to keep up with what, what and when their interests change. So that there again, I'll make a statement. I'll put down where I made that where I, where I recorded that and the date that I recorded it on. And this becomes very helpful to track um, what you're doing for the residents and it helps you to follow up on it. And it shows the rest of the surveyors what you've done. It shows how good you are. All right, that takes care of that section and that leads right into the cat and the caw. That was the cat part. This is the caw part. So now we've identified a problem, and what they want you to do up here is just very clearly write what the, that, what the problem is. So the problem might be resident long, no longer in music, interested in music groups, shows an interest in um, different type of music in a different venue. So down here, the first thing I'm going to write, I'm going to restate the problem. A resident no longer interested in, interested in coming to group sing. And then underneath that, it's asking for the cause and contributing factors. Cause, no longer interested in the music that we sing in groups. She wants to listen to classical music in her room. 
And then risk factors, if I don't, risk factor is, I have to say, if I don't do anything to fix this problem, what will happen? Well, the, the resident will become dissatisfied and unhappy in this particular case. So down there, I'll say, we'll honor residents' um, new preferences and, and change care plan. Or it might be that if I don't provide that, she's going to get depressed. Resident will get depressed, unable to do favorite activities. So I'll write that in there. So always you have to state what, restate what the problem is up here. What are the cause and contributing factors? And then finally over here, you state what, what are the risk of if, if something, if they don't change. If, if, if you do not do anything to make a change, what will happen? So chances are you're gonna write a new care plan. But right here, you don't write the care plan. You simply put in here the reasons why you, you will or will not create a new care plan. In my case, new care plan will be created to honor new interest in music and where she wants to, to enjoy her music. And then you're going to go to the next page. And you would write that goal. So the goal in here would then be written, I'm going to write it down here on this one because I'm writing to the trigger. And I would write in here, resident will listen to music three times a week in her room. Or let's put it this way, resident will listen to classical music in her room three times a week. And then I would make sure for my approaches down here that I would put in uh, provide classical music CDs, provide CD players, or I might mark the radio um, dial so she can find the classical musical station and provide setups as needed and cue the staff to put it on during um, her lunch if she's having lunch in the room or in the evening. Whatever her preference is, this is where I would state it out. So I'll have the goal and the approaches. And the same thing would be up here. I want you to write some additional goals. And as you saw in the book, when you went through it, you have to have subject, a verb, an action verb, a direct object, and a measurement of time. So the resident will read newspaper and novel three times a week for the next 90 days. And then down here, I'll put provide newspaper and romantic comedies of her preference and provide correct lighting and offer her more um, more books during the week. Okay, so that would fill out then your um, care plan goals and how to do them. Now, if you have any questions while you're doing your assignment, call me and we'll talk about it on the phone or please by all means we'll have a zoom session and we'll go over it together so that i can see what you're writing down you can show me and we can get this done the last piece of documentation that you have to do is quarterly report now this is the sheet that you'll see on the assignment but when you open up your computer you'll type in activities you'll type in their name you put in quarterly report and a blank sheet of paper is going to come up. So what I want you to do is remember what are the four questions that you answer in, in a quarterly report? You answer what did they do? How are they doing it? Are they reaching their goals? And what are your um, approaches with them? So the first paragraph will be they attend bingo, cooking, art groups. They like to go on outings. They enjoy music. They enjoy music in the evening. And they like to go to the movie afternoon, afternoon movie sessions or the travel logs. Whatever it is that they're do, doing, you list those things. And remember, this is for a whole 90 days, a quarter, 90 day period. So list, you'll be listing quite a few things. The second paragraph is how did they perform in those groups? Oh, in music, they enjoy singing along and they love the travel logs and sharing stories about their travel experiences. At church, they sing all the songs. Um, in groups and in other groups, in physical groups, they're a little, they're a little bit uh, intimidated or they, they don't do as well and they need to be encouraged. 
in, in physical sports or in physical exercise group and praise for what they can do. And um, then in the last, the third question, so that covers it. What did they do and how are they doing? Explain a little bit how they do in the group. Can they find all their bingo numbers? You know, do they enjoy the cooking group? Or do they like to just sit there and then just eat the, the samples? You know, explain what they do in your groups. Just a sentence or two. So it doesn't take too long to fill that out. And then the third question is, are they reaching their goals? Are they not reaching their goals? Or are they partially reaching their goals? So if they're reaching all their goals for now and they're doing fine, you look at their attendance sheets and they're doing fine. So yeah, they're reaching their goals, no problem. If they're not reaching their goals, explain a little bit why and how you're gonna change the goal. And then go back and go to that goal and change it. And sometimes that happens. So for our ladies that we're just talking about before here, we wanna say, uh, has, has changed in interest in music and now wants to listen to classical music in the room. We'll write a new goal for that. So it reminds me to do it, okay? But that doesn't mean the goal is written because I put it here. I gotta go put it in the goal section, in the care plan section. So, and then finally, you wanna write a couple of the approaches. What is it that you do to help this person be successful? And always put down one of the approaches that you're doing to, uh, to make the people successful because it shows that, the, that you know the people. So this really is not a really hard assignment to do. Actually, it's pretty easy and, and it's mostly your common sense, but it does take a little bit of um, knowing your resident. So make sure you do a good activity assessment. Make sure you do your contact notes. Um, make sure you do a cat and the call part. Make sure you write some care plans for me and make sure that you write a quarterly report. Now, I realize that you're not actually working with a person, so you may use a grandparent or an elderly person that you know or somebody that you worked with in the past, and you may do some creative writing in that I want you to show me what has happened to this person in the last 90 days. So you may do some creative writing to make up some facts to be able to fill out the forms, but it's important that you know how to fill out the forms. And these forms show how much work that you've done and shows how, what you're working with, how you're working with the residents. So the surveyors will come and look at your forms to find out what you're doing with, with the residents. And that's important for you to know. The other thing that I wanna share with you a little bit on documentation, and that is the documentation that I've just asked you to do is for long-term care. And if you're working in an assisted living building, you won't have as much documentation. You, you will not have to do cats and cause. So let's just paraphrase for you so that you know in assisted living what you will be doing. When you're working in assisted living, you will do an activity assessment and that has to be done within eight to 48 hours. And also in assisted living, you'll be doing a little bit more of a social service um, assessment because they do not have social services in um, assisted living. You will be contributing to the care plan and therefore you wanna make some care plans that are definitely reflective of the activities that they do. And also in assisted living, you're gonna to have to write a quarterly report. So you need to know your residents and what they're doing. And I found that it was helpful for me to have my staff fill out an, some form of attendance sheet so that when I wasn't there, I knew who they took to what groups. And that became very helpful. And the 90 days later, when I had to sit down and write a, write a uh, um, a quarterly report. So that is a, that is just a little segment, the difference between long-term care and assisted living. But no, for right now, this assignment is asking you to do documentation for long-term care. I wanna make sure that you guys know how to do that so I can get you certified and give you your certificate because that is a very important part. So again, if you're having trouble with this, I want you to make sure that you give me a call. Do not wait till the end of the term. This assignment is due on the third week, approximately third or fourth week. So make sure you do the assignment and get it in because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be typing and say, hey, where's your assignment? Do you need help with it? Let's go over it now. Don't wait till the end of the term. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful.
and we will talk with you later. Okay. Do you have any idea where that one ball is or that where I can maybe wrap it up? Yes, it's downstairs next to the couch and it's in that in a little bag for him. That's in the bag. Yeah. It's got a little, a little birthday paper on top of it. If you, if you have more to say, I'm going to